Hi, good evening everybody and uh, welcome to this uh, rather unusual uh, Year 6 open evening. Um, tonight is a night in the school calendar that I really look forward to, um, welcoming you all into, into Garibaldi, uh, having the opportunity to meet you first hand and, and, and taking you, showing you what we have to offer here at Garibaldi. Uh, unfortunately, we, we clearly can't do that um, currently, just given the, the current situation, uh, which is a real shame. So apologies um, that we've not been able to do what we would normally do. However, I do th think it's important just to have the opportunity to touch base with parents and, and just give you a brief basic overview of what we are all about. Um, this is one of the first times that we've done an open evening like this or any event like that. So I, I, I will um, say in advance, um, I'm hoping there won't be any technical hitches. We've had several rehearsals through this over the last couple of days, but please bear with us and, and hopefully, um, you know, we'll, we'll keep it as streamlined as we possibly can. Um, to accompany the presentation this evening um, on the school website, there, there is a transition page, which I'll reference again towards the end of the presentation. Um, and and obviously what I'd like to do in, in due course is invite you into school just to see us in action. Uh, again, I can't firm a date up for that currently, but hopefully it won't be too far in the future until I will be able to meet you all firsthand. But the purpose of this evening um, is to help you to make a decision on the next stage of your child's school career. It's one of the biggest decisions you'll ever make um, in terms of you, you, your child's educational experience. And it's really important that um, you look at Garibaldi and you hear what we're about, but also to look at other schools and compare and contrast what everybody has to offer to make sure that Garibaldi School is the right school for you and, and for your children. And, and what's really important in this is that you, you've got until the 31st of October and, and, and until you have to make your final decision. And if you go to other places or if you've been elsewhere and you've, you've come to Garibaldi tonight, you can change your, um, your preferences as many times as you like through the Nottinghamshire County Council website. Um, but, but ultimately, you've got to be really confident and comfortable in the school that you send your children to. And I'm ho hoping that through this evening's presentation, what you'll, what you'll see is what we have to offer is, is right for your child. Um, ultimately, it is your choice. And what I would say this evening, if I was talking to you in person or individually, um, is that this is the start of uh, a partnership between the school and the parents. And um, um, it, it's really important that we have that partnership and that we work together and that right from the get-go, right from now, you understand um, what our expectations are of the students, what you can expect of us, but how we would all work together. Um, our vision, ethos and um, mission need to link into what your beliefs are as well. Every school is different. Garibaldi for me is unique. I'm really proud of Garibaldi and hopefully you'll, you'll hear that as I go through the presentation this evening. But what you need to do when selecting a, a school for your child is align what your expectations are from um, the, the child's education experience and hopefully um, they will align. But I'm, I'm really proud of Garibaldi and, and other members of staff that will speak to you tonight. Um, you, you'll hear that that permeates through what we will talk, talk to you about. I'll talk about the journey and a journey is a word, a, a word that we use a lot of in school. Um, you can see there year six right at the start of the journey, but um, what we will talk about is that seven year journey, because what we want to do is to nurture the students and give them an experience whereby at the end of year 11, where um, students can go elsewhere or you know carry on their education or apprenticeship or education elsewhere, um, well they can do, but what we'd like to do is grow and continue to develop um, our, our young people through year 12 and 13. So you'll hear a little bit about our curriculum and what we have on offer and the different subjects that are available to study here and hopefully um, students will have developed that interest in, in a particular subject area that they can go and specialise in further in year 12 and 13 but also that they are really comfortable and really happy with what they've had over the first five years that they want to stay with us and, and, and complete that um, post compulsory education. Our mission statement, our aims, really straightforward and we refer to these, um, the, these two areas quite frequently in school. We talk to the students through assembly, we talk to staff and you'll see that I will show these through different presentations, whether it's open evening or parents evening 
or um, celebration evenings, I'll always come back to the mission statement and the aims because this is what drives the school. This is also the heart. In particular, what, what I'd like to draw attention to is that supportive and caring learning community. Um, we do value every student as an individual and throughout the school career, we will know your, your children inside out. We'll know what makes them tick. We'll know what their preferences are. We'll know how they study and, um, and how to maximise the best out of your students to ensure that they make the progress that they should do to prepare them for a successful adult life. There's three other words within the aims which uh, we uh, again regularly refer to and, and talk through assemblies and personal development and character development and, and through lessons and that's pride, respect, achieve. And you'll see um, that that's emblazoned through the school. And if you were here tonight, what you would see is that's writ large in, in the hall, okay? And again, really, really believe that students should have pride in themselves, in the school and the community, all right? Again, I've talked about my pride, but it's really important that the, the students have pride in themselves and, and are aspirational and take pride in the school and their community. Um, that they respect each other and they have the respect for themselves and for the staff that support them and that they aim high and achieve well. And achievement, um, as, I'll, as I'll talk to you about in a few minutes, isn't just about academic achievement. This is about um, developing as a, as, as, a, as a whole child, as a whole student. Um, we are student centred, all right? Everything that we do is for our students. Um, clearly, good exam results impact really positively on the school. All right, it does look good for the school, but we're not here for us. We are here for the students and the community. And what we want from our students is to be able to set them up so that they are the best student they could possibly be, that they're the best young adult that they could possibly be, with the keys to open the doors to be whatever they want to be when they leave um, when they leave Garibaldi. And again, not only just the academic qualifications, but also developing the skills and the characteristics and those personal qualities that employers or um, higher education providers or apprenticeships look for. Ultimately, students are in competition with everybody. All right, when they leave school, when they've applied for a job, OK, they're, they're, they're in a pool with other people. And what we want them to do is not only have the qualifications, but those skills and those personal skills to get them through an interview successfully or to articulate themselves well. OK, so it's about developing the whole person. I'm sure that for the vast majority of students in year six, they won't know what they want to be when they leave school. OK, I certainly didn't. And I, I took um, career changes or, or diverted my journey several times through um, through my school career. But what we'll talk to the students about is um, they can be whatever they want to be. OK, some people will want to be doctors. Some people will want to be mechanics. Some people may want to be hairdressers. Some people want, may want to be painters and decorators. There's a wealth of jobs out there. And as part of our curriculum offer, we'll regularly um, develop their um, ideologies through a careers programme and through character development and through personal development. But ultimately, what I want them to be is the best that they can be. So if they want to be a hairdresser, they're the best hairdresser um, that, that they can possibly be. If they want to be a teacher, then they're set up ready to be the best teacher that they can be. OK, so we've got high aspirations, high ambitions of all students. And to go back to our, our aims and our mission statement, I also want the students to have high aspirations and high expectations of themselves also, so we can support them on their journey, whatever that may be. We've got a school formula and it's not mathematically correct, OK, but it's universally understood and we universally apply it. And again, I'll talk regularly to this with staff, students and all other stakeholders. What this does is articulate different responsibilities of different people involved with the school. OK, and I talked about the partnership earlier. It's really important that parents understand um, the different roles that people have to play in it. but. When I complete what, what um, my speech this evening, my section, I'm going to hand over to other colleagues 
who are going to take particular aspects of this formula and talk in more depth about what each section means. Simply put though, the brackets on the top line is the student's contribution um, to achieving well. If they have a great attitude to learning and if they receive no consequences, and if they have an attendance above 96%, which is what's proven to be the best attendance to, to ensure maximum progress, then the students part of the formula will lead them to success. My responsibility is to ensure that the teaching is the best that it could possibly be. And I'll leave no stone unturned to ensure that the teachers develop constantly to be the best that they can be. To support that, will give the students an extraordinary compassion and support. And this is the partnership. I can hand on my heart say that we truly care about the students and making sure they're the best that they can be. But this isn't something that we can reach on our own. This is the partnership that we give the extraordinary compassion and support and the parents give the compassion and support and that we can all um, working together ensure that the students know we're on the same page and that you know we're all there for them to make sure that they are the best they can be. If we all play our parts in it then, um, outcomes will be amazing for those students. Okay, And again, not only the outcomes that they receive on a sheet of paper at the end of year 11 or year 13, but they're really set up to be successful in life when, when they decide what it is they want to be. A question that I will regularly ask and again, this comes through assemblies, it comes through our interactions with students on a daily basis. It comes from um, interactions with staff, interactions with parents, but also the wider community. So I'll ask this of governors, I'll ask this of councillors that come into school. OK, we're all here to make sure students are successful. So it's not about standing still. It's not about resting on our laurels. If every day we can do something that extra 0.01 better, then we're all going to be better for it. Students are going to be really well developed. Staff are going to be really well developed. And essentially, the Garibaldi School is the hub of the community. And what I want to do is for the community to be proud of the school and for us to uh, and for the community to see um, where that extra 0.01 comes from, from, from that angle also. So we're always striving to improve. Um, but what I want to talk to you about now is just to give you a bit of a flavour as to what that looks like. So I've talked about the formula, the extra 0.01. Right, so what does that actually mean? OK, so in 2019, this was the almost the league table of uh, progress that schools made. OK, and this is the top of the league table for Nottinghamshire. And I'm really proud that we are there. OK, we were the sixth best school in Nottinghamshire out of 73 secondary schools, but the first best school in Mansfield. Now, I'm really proud of that. But if I go back to where does that extra 0.01 come from? Well, if you add that extra 0.01 to it, you'll see we'd have been in fifth place. And you'll see that if we can do that constantly within the next three or four years, we'll be moving up into the top three. All right, and that would be something that's great for our students and great for the local community. This gives an overall picture of how our students have achieved. But on a personal level for the students, which is the most important aspect, that shows that the progress that the students have made is above the national average. And that's really important for them to take pride in that and to take that later on in life to wherever they're going to be to say look at the school this is where I came from this is how proud I am look at the progress that I and others made by being here last year due to Covid we're not going to receive a performance table similar to this but what I can suggest is that it would be extremely similar to that if not higher had we had the opportunity to um, for students to sit those exams and for, for uh, the performance tables to be published in, in, in this way. OK, and um, as a result of the 2019 results um, we received some accolades. We were recognised nationally for exceptional educational outcomes okay. and we, we weren't just recognised once. All right. For being in the top 10 percent of schools for key stage five. We also were recognised 
um, in achieving significantly higher than average student progress in key stage five, but also the GCSE results and those students finishing with us at, at, at 16, we were in the top 10% of all schools nationally for the progress that students made. And again, it gives me real pride to talk and share that with you, all right, that this is the recognition for all of the hard work that the students put in, that the staff put in, but is developed and bred through the partnership that exists between us. So again, I'm really proud of that. And, you know, a little snippet there from the newspaper in recognition of, um, of that work. Again, in recognition of where we are, and this just isn't on the 2019 results, this is for the progress that we've shown over time and for the outstanding results that students get and um, the great teaching that goes on here and for the extraordinary compassion and support that we give to our students. We are a leading edge school and we're one of only 250 schools that's been given that designation uh, nationally and that that is to support other schools in becoming even better than they are okay so supporting other schools in in particular areas where they can develop well we've shown that we've got the skill set for that here and that through the work that we do with young people and the results that the young people get and the quality of the destinations and um you know their contribution to society after garibaldi well that's been recognized through that leading edge program you can see the last Ofsted inspection that we had was in 2017. We are due an inspection at some point of this year and I'm really excited. I don't think many people would say that in, in, in um, my position, but I'm really excited about Ofsted coming because I can't wait to share with them the amazing results that we get and showcasing our amazing students and going into lessons with those inspectors to, to show them how great our students are and how great a provision our students get. So again, I'm looking forward to that at some point this year and hopefully um, COVID, COVID dependent, I'll be able to report on that to you um, as, as the year progresses. But this next bit is our journey to become amazing. We've been graded good in two consecutive offset inspections. My role in it now is to ensure that by those extra steps, those 0.01s, um, the accumulation of them, that over the next few years we can walk, work towards that outstanding grade. And again, that would be absolutely fantastic for the school. But again, and more importantly, we don't become outstanding without the students, without the community and without the parental support. So hopefully tonight, will we'll give you the motivation to want to apply for your child to come to the Garibaldi School so you can be part of our journey to becoming amazing with us. So from me, um, I'll come back to the formula because what I'm going to do now is hand over to uh, a number of colleagues of mine who are going to take the formula and talk specifically about the student experiences and our expectations because we do have very high standards and expectations and it's really important that you know them before you sign up to our school um, but again I'm hoping that between now and the end of the year I know we've got to you've got to apply for your school place by October but I am hoping that by the end of the year I will be able able to open the school up and I will be able to welcome you in so you can come and have a look round and see the school in action as you would have done this evening um, but what we will do is we'll keep the website regularly updates and updated and, and, and you informed. There's a transition section on the website. Please continue to look at that because we will update that. And an example of that is over the next few weeks, we are placing on there a promotional DVD where we've actually gone around the school or will go around the school and, and you will see different aspects of it in action. And that just gives some context to what we're talking about this evening from me. Um, thank you for coming th uh, this evening. What I'm going to do now is hand over to Mr Dawson, who is the deputy head teacher of the school, who's going to talk to you a little bit more about progression and achievement. But from me, thank you very much for, for coming this evening. Thanks, Mr Alders. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm responsible in school for progression. Um, and making sure that students throughout their time in school 
um, get to those destinations that we want them to get to. As as Mr Aldred has alluded to, achievement at the Garibaldi School has been strong for a, for a number of years now and that is down to a number of factors, not least the hard work of the staff, but also the students themselves over that time. And there are key ingredients that help ensure this success and high levels of achievement. And I, I'm just going to address a few of those in my presentation with you this evening. So one of those is the high aspirations that we have. Another is the way in which we kind of recognise the development of the students as a whole and support that. Some of the systems that we use, such as attitudes to learning, which is already being referenced, um, the support of key staff, such as mentors, recognition, which is key in terms of students being aware of the, the progress and the achievements that they've had and are making. And of course, an amazing curriculum in teaching. And uh, Ms. Ms. Stevenson will reference that um, kind of later in, in the presentation. So I'm sure you've had a look at our website um, and some of the information that's contained within it. And if you have, then you will have spotted that throughout those commentaries and those um, statements, there's a, a huge number of references to our high aspirations and whether that's about their conduct in school, which Mr Hunt will address um, later in the presentation, or whether that's about their aspirations for where they want to get in life, um, even things like how much money they want to earn when they get to cut that point of having a job. We are regularly referencing those uh, conversations and it's often really good to go round to lessons and see staff having those conversations about the real world purpose and use of some of the learning that they've got um, in, le in their lessons and in school. The information on the website testifies our to our high aspirations but if you speak to staff and students in school it's not just a veneer it's deep rooted but it's not as Mr Aldred referenced not just about academic grades it is about character development and personal development to ensure that students are the best that they can be in everything that they do and in reference to the performance tables we don't do these things to ensure our place high up on those performance tables. But if we are doing our job um, as well as we can, and if we are supporting those high aspirations, well, actually a byproduct of that will be that we'll sit hopefully at the top of the tree um, in the next few years. ATL has got quite a mention. Um, it is something that students will see day in and day out in school. Um, it's a really key system in terms of ensuring that students can develop themselves and it's inextricably linked to achievement, aspiration and character and it's something that students will come back to at regular intervals. It's also something that um, as parents you will see reference to in the monitoring that we send home as well and throughout our assemblies, throughout our lessons, opportunities to reflect on attitudes to learning are often there. So you know this slide which highlights the fact that students need to recognise that failing is actually part of the path to success and that actually to fail is not a bad thing. Trying to convince students of that is often quite difficult, but actually those regular messages referenced in assemblies and in lessons does support their thinking and does support their, their character development and their personal development as well. This quote again is one that I've used in assemblies with students in the past. You know, success is a journey, not a destination. What we recognise is that students will, when they leave school, continue to develop. They will continue to learn and they may be successful in school, but they've then got to be successful in the workplace and they've got to be continually successful um, throughout their lives. And recognising that is important. The mentors are one of a number of staff in school that will support students and it's not just about um, that time that they spend with them in the morning. Um, the mentor for us is somebody that will develop the student's attitude to learning, their personal development and support their academic progress and in a sense they are holistically responsible for the progression of students throughout their time in school. So mentors also deliver some key curriculum content. So things around careers, things around healthy lifestyles and relationships, they also deliver. And that ensures that students get to know their mentor, 
and mentors get to know their students really well to ensure that that support is is maximised. We've also got a broader group of staff in school, um, the achievement team who work together collectively and focus primarily on maximising student achievement and progress, but also support um, student welfare, attendance as well. And as you can see from some of the uh, roles that are referenced there, we have a person who is responsible for the achievement of each year group in school, the achievement lead. We have some members of that achievement team that are responsible for particular groups of students, so disadvantaged students. And Mr Voice, who gets a mention there, um, is the SENCO and kind of leader for engagement, student engagement. We'll be talking to you later in the presentation this evening. In terms of recognition, we've got a range of ways in which we recognise student achievement, and that is absolutely um, crucial to do, because if students don't know that they're doing well, then actually they can't maximise the benefit of that. And so pin badges are something that we use. They are issued for outstanding attitude to learning, progress, attendance. We award these each term, but to be eligible, what we say to students is that they have to have at least good attitude to learning, progress and attendance overall. So again, that maintains that high, aspect, high expectations and, and kind of high aspirations for them. So the way we give these out um, is, is, is pretty clear and there's a bronze, silver and a gold badge that we hand out. And there's a special Garibaldi Colours badge, uh, which is slightly bigger, um, which we award at the end of the year. And if students receive that, then they get to wear it throughout their time in school. So these are an outward recognition um, that students can see with their peers of who's been successful and who is achieving. We also have um, certificates that we send home and these can be personalised by staff, teachers, mentors, school leaders um, to send those home. In the past, Mr Aldred has put his name to some of these to send home in terms of uh, particularly um, high levels of attitude to learning or particular um, student success. And often they can be used by teachers to flag particular incidents of achievement um, that might be specific to that student. Um, and we're always keen to know from parents of any successes outside of school that we would like to recognise as well. And a recent addition to our methods of recognition has been the Hall of Fame, which um, is published online and every um, six weeks or so, six students from each year group um, are given the honour of being on the Hall of Fame based on nominations from, from staff. And this is something that students and parents have really kind of engaged with. And I think it's a, a really good form of recognition. Um, and it's something that I know when we did it last year, um, parents were kind of taking screenshots of it and obviously keeping it for posterity in the future. In terms of my section, I, this, this is kind of drawing to a close, but what I do want to address and what I do want to talk about and something that again Mr Aldred um, alluded to is student destinations. Obviously we are almost custodians of the students for the time that they are with us, whether that's five year journey or seven year journey, but ultimately they are going to leave us and they're going to go somewhere else. And what we ensure is that students, their destinations are as aspirational as they can be. And on the screen now, you can just see a list of some of the universities, for example, that students leaving us in year 13 have gone off to um, just in the last 12 months. Um, and you can see there's quite a range in terms of geographic location. Um, students are getting further away from um, the kind of East Midlands area over time. Um, you can also see some of the kind of quite reputable companies, Rolls-Royce Boots, for example, that students have gone off to work for, often as apprenticeship uh, apprentices getting high level apprenticeships. One student recently got one um, with uh, Rolls-Royce and that was a massively competitive process, um, something like 4000 applications. And so for them to achieve that coming from the Garibaldi School, um, again, is testament to the support um, and the challenge that they've had throughout their time. And in terms of what students go off to do, we often find out about this because they are absolutely desperate to come back to us to tell us what they've been doing. Um, and it's really nice to see ex students come back and inspire the kind of current and future generations in terms of their destinations for students to sit back and think it's amazing that somebody who was sat maybe in this classroom where I am now has gone off to be a police officer, has gone off to Oxford University to study engineering, has gone off to 
IBM to develop the next kind of supercomputer for the future. Um, so in terms of my section, that brings it to a close. At this point, um, what I'd like to do is to hand over to my colleague, Melissa Stevenson, who's assistant head of school. Um, she's responsible for curriculum and teaching. And um, all it leaves me to do is say, to say thank you very much for attending the evening. And I look forward to um, seeing you in the coming months and coming years. Thank you, Mr. Dawson, and uh, good evening to all. Um, this evening, I'm going to give you an overview of the curriculum here at Garibaldi, um, and that's the great teaching bit of the formula that Mr. Aldred displayed earlier. Um, and when I use the word curriculum, what I mean is the range of different subjects that we offer, what is taught in, in lessons, um, and how that is taught right from the very first day that Year 7s join us, all the way through their seven year journey with us to year 13. So um, we want all of our students to love learning. We want students to go home tired at the end of each day, um, excited to talk about the debate that they've had in science, the um, experiment that they might have done in, in geography, the, um, the problem that they've worked hard to solve in maths. And through our curriculum, we want your child to find their passions and interests and develop the skills and knowledge that will um, help them to be successful on whatever path they choose. And we've spoken already um, quite a lot this evening about future pathways, and I promise that students do get a lot of support in, in deciding what that um, onward path is going to be. Um, at the Garibaldi School, we've worked really hard to make sure that students are able to study a wide range of subjects for as long as possible. And I know that that's something that you'll be really excited about, and I'll show you in just a moment all of the different subjects that we offer. All of our teachers make lessons challenging, and uh, that doesn't just mean hard, um, but it means that they'll support students to make amazing progress by um, getting them to work just outside of their comfort zone in each and every lesson. And as I'm sure you've already grasped this evening, what we do here is not only about passing exams. Um, we go beyond the curriculum and we offer things in our lessons that we don't have to teach, but that we feel make our students learning more interesting and relevant to them and their futures. And some examples of this might be um, understanding how a supermarket influences what we buy in a technology lesson, um, analysing what really is in your favourite drink in a science lesson and how trigonometry helped to send man to the moon. So what, subject, what subjects do students study at the Garibaldi School? In years seven, and eight, seven, eight and nine, um, you'll study all of these fantastic subjects. And I'm sure there are lots of things on that list that you will have done in your primary school with your classroom teachers. Um, but in secondary school, students have separate lessons for each subject and a different teacher for each subject too. And it's up to students to move around the school site from lesson to lesson throughout the day. Um, they have different exercise books for each subject and we find that they soon develop the organisation skills and time management skills that are so essential um, for them to be, be organised and turn up to the right classroom with the right equipment at the right time. Um, and we give timetables out when students first arrive to help them find their way around and to help them learn their teachers' names. So what about GCSEs? Um, at the end of year nine, um, students choose what subjects they want to study in years 10 and 11. And you'll have had plenty of time um, and guidance to help you decide what subjects are the right subjects for you, um, taking into account your strength and strengths and future plans. Um, there are some subjects that are compulsory, for example, maths, English and science. <clears throat> but at GCSE, we introduce some brilliant um, and new options for students to consider taking, which include child development, hospitality and catering and business studies. And we want students to remain with us <clears throat> for the full seven year journey from year seven to 13. And we offer a wide range of courses in our sixth form. Um, and the list on your screens now is not um, not the full list of subjects that we offer. Um, and even if we don't offer the particular course here at Garibaldi, um, being part of the Nova Trust means that we can work with schools outside, um, outside but in the nearby area to enable students to follow their desired route. Um, 
I'm now going to hand over to my colleague, Mr. Tom Voice, who is Director of Student Inv Engagement and the Special Educational Needs Coordinator. Thank you. At the Garibaldi School, we have a team of support staff who are there to support your child and really care for them to make sure that they have the best possible experience and ultimately that they're happy in school. We're fortunate that we've got a student support area within the school and that's the base that students might use at the start or end of every day or if they receive some specific interventions to help them be successful at the school. We're all a very caring team and one which is experienced to support your child and their needs. In terms of our intent statement and what we look um, to provide for students, we're really focused on making sure that students are recognised as an individual and that we put in support which makes sure that they're treated as equal and that they're able to be successful. We look to provide the opportunities so that they can maximise their time at the Garibaldi School and we believe that the provision and the support they're provided needs to be holistic and take a child-centred approach. We have some central principles and their beliefs that drive the department and the support that we offer. Ultimately, we believe that all students can learn and make progress. We provide training for teachers and support staff so that they feel confident in meeting students' needs. And we look to make sure that families and children are at the heart of any system which we introduce. In the first half term, once your child has settled in at the Garibaldi School, you can look to receive a support plan meeting. This support plan meeting will be with one of the learning assistants that we have in school and it will talk about how they've settled in, how they're progressing and any concerns that yourself or the child may have. These will hopefully take place in person, but maybe virtual. We very much look forward to joining the Garibaldi School and we're very proud um, and confident that your child will have a successful time with us. If you do have any questions regarding transition, we have a specialist learning assistant who specialises in this and her email address can be seen below. I'm now going to hand you over to uh, Mr Hunt, who's the Assistant Head of School for Standards. Good evening, everybody. As Mr Lewis has just said, uh, my name is Phil Hunt. I'm an Assistant Head of School uh, responsible for standards and expectations. Uh, and as Mr Audrey said at the start of the presentation, um, ultimately it's your choice as to which secondary school you, you choose to send your child to. And I think it's important that you choose a school that does have very high standards and expectations and we are that school. Um, we do expect that throughout the journey the students have with us that all parents uh, and carers do support us in terms of uh, meeting those standards and expectations. Um, and we're always looking at ways in which we can increase the level of standards and we have high expectations of students at all times. There's a number of key ways in which we look to drive up those standards and support students in meeting our expectations and I'm going to go through those uh, in my part of the presentation. We always make it very clear to the students at every opportunity as to why we have all of those things in place. It's important that they fully understand it and it's important for you and I'll stress it again that you do choose a school that has those high standards and expectations. Our ethos is on the screen at the moment and I've highlighted the bottom section because it talks about the fact that by the time our students leave, they've gained the skills and qualities and qualifications for a successful future, a successful adult life, a successful life in the world of work. And securing employment is not just about good qualifications, it's about the character of the young person and that that young person understands the responsibilities of being an employee. All of those rules and regulations that we have in school are there to help prepare students for that world of work. It's really important that we do that and it sets them up very nicely. And as Mr Dawson's already said, they've gone on to achieve great things. We've mentioned this as well this evening already, pride, respect, achieve. Um, it is fundamental to everything that we do. Um, we want the students to show real pride in the fact they attend the Garibaldi School and meet those levels of pride at all times. It should be evident at all times they are really pre proud to be a student here. We expect them to show respect to everybody at all times. That's their peers, it's the members of staff, all members of staff that work in the school, but also respect to the local community. I've worked here for a very long time and I'm really proud to have done so. And we want students to have that same pride when they attend. We also think it's important that parents and carers are also incredibly proud that their son or their daughter attends the Garibaldi School. 
We've talked about high levels of support, and Mr Dawson in particular talked about the role of a mentor, but I must stress that every member of staff that works in this school is there to offer some support. Whatever the role of that um, employee might be, ultimately the students are at the centre of everything that we do. The mentors will offer levels of support, the teachers will obviously offer significant amounts of support, not just in terms of teaching and learning, but also in terms of supporting the students in terms of their health and safety and their welfare. Mr Voice has talked about the support from student support and I lead a team of people that form the student services team. They're responsible for ensuring that the students are safeguarded, their attendance is good, behaviour is good and they meet our high standards. There's an experienced member team of people within student services and again students can visit them at any time when they're facing some particular challenges. Our very basic expectations our formula talks about 96% attendance and that's really important and Mr Aldred made reference to the fact that anything below that will have a detrimental impact on the progress of a student. Ultimately we want all students to be here 100% of the time. We expect them to be punctual and arrive at the allocated time. That's really important and we can all relate to that in terms of our roles in wider society and the jobs that we have. We expect them to look smart, so wear the correct uniform at all times. Come to school with the basic equipment, be prepared and ready to learn with a bag, with a pencil case and all those very basic things that you need to ensure they make progress. And they always need to adopt a positive attitude to learning. Ultimately, it's not just about students achieving all of these things. They really need to understand what are the benefits to them of achieving those things. And I'll talk in a bit more detail about that. 100% attendance. Well, that's really important. And when I go and visit primary schools and I meet with students in year five and six in particular, they're always quick to tell me when I mention attendance that they've got 100% attendance. They're really proud of that. And I want students when they join us in year seven to carry on with that pride in terms of I want them to be shouting about the fact they have 100% attendance. And Mr Dawson has talked about how we would recognise that with the students. We have a student and family engagement officer who offers additional levels of support for those students that might be finding 100% attendance particularly challenging. I think it's really important if Garibaldi is your school of choice that you conform to everything that we expect in terms of standards and expectations. And it might be worth having a look at the school website at our typical term dates to think about do they work for you, your circumstances and your family. We don't. Um, authorised holidays during school term time um, and we will enforce fines for those families that do take students away. There's more information on our website about attendance and the impact of poor attendance and there's a really useful table on there that helps put it into some sort of perspective. And if you take 95% attendance across a school year, that's 50 lessons missed and that's a significant chunk of learning that that young person is missing out on. If a family were to take a two week holiday where well, you're talking nearly 60 lessons missed. And I know because I work with lots of students who face particular anxieties when they do miss time from school, getting back in after a holiday or a period of absence, it makes it really challenging for them to catch up on the work they missed. They have that sense of loss, that sense of what have I missed out on? Why is everybody making progress and I'm not? So it's really, really important that students do attend 100% of the time. In terms of the uniform, um, we're quite pragmatic about this. We do have a formal school uniform and you can see from the images there and you'll see from students that you may see traveling to and from the school that we do have a formal blazer, shirt, tie, shoes and so on. Some of the options, are, uh, some of the items rather are optional. Um, so the school coat, for example, is optional. We do try to keep it so that costs don't become excessive. Some schools will have things like branded trousers, um, branded shirts. We don't have that. Plain black trousers are absolutely fine, but we do insist on plain black um, formal school shoes. In terms of the non-negotiables, well, all of the students in school are familiar with that concept of the non-negotiables. And there's 10 key things on there that we ex expect students to adhere to at all times. It's the very basics that we expect from having good manners, using appropriate language, not using their mobile phone on the school site, making sure that their uniform always conforms to our high expectations. And by having those non-negotiables, it avoids any confusion and actually it reduces the need to sanction students when they have breached those non-negotiables because they all know what they are. All the staff know and all the students know. There's no grey areas. 
Consequences is our behaviour policy for in lessons. And when you're making um, a choice as to which secondary school that you send your son or daughter to, one of the things you will be concerned about will be, is there any disruptive less, uh, behaviour in lessons? We work very hard to keep that to an absolute minimum and we use consequences and all the teachers will adopt consequences as our mechanism for keeping disruptive behaviour to an absolute minimum. Again, it's not about issuing sanctions, it's about helping students to understand the impact of their behaviour and giving them plenty of opportunities within consequences to correct their behaviour and take a different course of action by focusing on the task at hand. Yes, there's detentions within that and they escalate slightly, but it's really, really important. It's there to help de-escalate situations and it's there for the benefit of all students and all staff. Conduct cars, this is something we've introduced this year and we've been running it since the beginning of September and it's proved very successful. This is about helping students to understand what our expectations are of them when they're not actually in lessons. And as we've talked about, students will move around the school sites. It's much bigger than it is at primary school and they have access to lots of different areas. And it's really important that they fully understand what we expect from them. The conduct card is an opportunity for a member of staff to make a quick note of something that they've seen that young person do linked to the non-negotiables that may fall below our expectations. But the flip side to that, and importantly, there's also space within that conduct card to recognise those things that students are doing particularly well. It really has encouraged some very positive dialogue between members of staff and students around those basic expectations and all seem to be benefiting. So I'm going to talk now a little bit about the process for um, securing a place at the Gary Baldy School. And I must stress at this point that we are a very, very popular school. Um, our results have, have made us very popular and our reputation has contributed to that as well. And to put that into some kind of context, last year we had 350 applications that had us named as one of their preferred choices. There's only 175 places available in year seven. So on National Offer Day back in March, the students, uh, oh, sorry, all 175 places were allocated. On the screen at the moment and available on the website is our oversubscription criteria. Every school will have that and that's to determine how those students will be uh, offered a school place. And again, to help get some perspective on this and you can look in more detail at the website, um, for the year sevens that we've currently got, there was only a handful of students from Criterion 4 that managed to secure a school place. So nobody from Criterion 5, 6 or 7. So again, please have a look at that. It's really important you do that because it will help you manage your expectations and the expectations that your son or your daughter has with regard to securing a place at the Gary Bowley School. Um, there is an appeals process, so if you weren't successful in getting a place, then you can appeal, but that should not be relied upon as a, as a method for getting your son or your daughter into the school. And I must stress that it's not personal. There is processes that we need to go through when allocating places. Um, and again, it's not personal at all. So we use the Nottinghamshire County Council's coordinated scheme for uh, a new intake of students and these students that might join us throughout a school year. And again, on the screen now is, is the link that you need to use or, or the web address that you need to use to access that. But I'll talk about where you can access that through our school website. So there's some key points in terms of the application process. You must apply before the closing date of the 31st of October. That's really important. Anything submitted after that date will be considered a late application and won't be can get considered when we start to rank the um, applications against our uh, subscription criteria. Please read that criteria and fully understand it. Read it for all of the schools that you're thinking of applying to and please ensure that you fill the boxes in when it asks you for four preferences. Some people do fill in those boxes and just put Gary Baldy as school number one and they put no other school. Well, if you don't get a place at the Garibaldi School, then you will find that the local authority will simply all allocate you a school and that's completely out of your control. So it's really important that you do put down four preferences. You must stick to those dates. That's really important. 
And I must also stress that I've had a number of people applying to get it, or sorry, appealing um, decisions in terms of not getting a place when actually they could have gone back and amended their application form up until the 31st of October based on a change in personal circumstances. So if you were to apply and then you then move, I know there's not much time between now and the end of October, but if you know you're going to be moving, you can edit that application uh, and edit your preferences up until the 31st of October. In terms of the links that you need to follow on our school website to access um, the application forms, there is a transition page that again has been referenced this evening. Um, if you click on that, it will then take you to another page that has our oversubscription criteria. And there is a link on there to the Nottinghamshire County Council admission page, which looks something like that. And quite simply, you need to click on the big green button, apply for a school place and follow all of the instructions from that point onwards. So the final thing for me to do is to thank you for attending this virtual event this evening. Very unusual set of circumstances for us presenting in this way. Um, I don't think we've had any technical glitches um, that we did fear and, and thank you for bearing with us if we had. Um, I do hope and we all hope that the evening's event has provided some clarity about the type of school that we are and whether we are the right school for you. And we do hope that you will be putting an application to, to come here. And we do hope that we are in a position to welcome you to the Gary Bordy School uh, in September. Thank you very much and have a pleasant evening.